Welcome back to part 12 of Password Cracking 101 plus 1. In the last video we introduced Prince as a really nice password candidate generator and we used it uh, to crack a hash with the with the with the sort of um, primary goal of looking to debug our rules to see which was our successful rule in cracking the hash. We did that here by taking Prince processor with our word list, setting a minimum password length of eight, and feeding the generates feeding the candidates from that into Hashcat, and very importantly, enabling debug mode and a file, so that when our hash cracked, we could look inside that file and identify the finding rule, the rule that was aug the rule that successfully augmented one of our vanilla candidates to crack the password hash here. We're going to continue on with Prince to use it to attack passphrases now. Now, back in uh, video 9 when we looked at combinator attacks, we had this uh, hashcat attack string here where we said we could run in combinator mode two dictionaries, in this case it was the same dictionary, our 20k combined mid space, which if we think all the way back was our original 20k dictionary combined together with a space delimiter in the middle, so we had element space element. By running that in combinator mode with itself, we could achieve our uh, four element passphrase, but we'd still need to add uh, a space in the middle of those two dictionaries, and that's what we're doing here with the dash J. Um, shout out to uh, Royce Williams and Sam Crowley, Tycho Tithonus and Chicken Man, who are both part of Team Hashcat, for steering me in the right direction on Twitter when I was scratching my head about how best to achieve this efficiently. Um, and they, they kind of um, leaned in and said that we can do this a little bit better by taking prints and setting a minimum and maximum element count, uh, therefore allowing us to choose we could have a um, minimum and maximum of three for a three element passphrase. In this case, we're looking at a four element passphrase. You could even set a minimum and maximum of two and four if you're, you're unsure and you can build up chains uh, to, to build up your passphrase to a length of your choosing. Either way, if we set a minimum max of four, an overall minimum length of eight on our 20k space dictionary, um, what we'll achieve is our four elements, but the last element will still have that trailing space at the end, so we need to do something about that. When we feed these candidates into Hashcat, that's what we're doing here. Now, admittedly, we're not using kind of two dictionaries here, but we want to just apply a single rule, and we can still use the dash J to do that on our dictionary. So what we're saying here is dash J close bracket, and if we uh, bring back the, um, the rule listing here from the Hashcat wiki, we can see that a close bracket is truncate right, so delete the last character. Uh, so back into the context of our attack here, our last character is going to be that trailing space from our 20k space dictionary. So that very cleanly will always delete the last space, giving us a nice succinct four element passphrase. You can then, of course, you know, apply whatever you want to. In this case, we've applied some rules and Prince itself does actually come with its own rules. It's got two rules. Um, the one I tend to use is the Prince optimized rule, uh, and it's shown to have really, really good results. Uh, it works well with Prince. So this would be a really nice way of allowing you to attack passphrases succinctly using Prince. But yeah, uh, I think I said, might have said this in the last video, Prince is one of the, the things I definitely go to when my usual sort of dictionary and rule attacks and things fail, and also when I've uh, attacked using certain common masks and things and hybrid attacks to see what works. I, I generally always go to Prince next, so well worth having a look. And let's have a look now. So let's take uh, Prince and use it to crack a passphrase in our exercise 12 file here, which is another NTLM hash. The passphrase is based on Google word list. Okay, we've got that on our Kali boxes. It has four elements, is space delimited, and is very, very interestingly, ex specifically between 24 and 26 characters long. It's almost like this has been created for the purposes of a training course. Right, okay, so we've got everything we need to know here. Let's uh, grab Kali into view and have a look at this. Now, we need to prepare our Google word list because it's space delimited and we don't have a space delimited word list yet. So what I'm going to do first of all is use awk to um, basically insert a space at the end of every line in the Google word list and I'm going to create a word list from this called Google word list space so it's nice and easy to understand. Okay there we go. Now that we have that we have a word list where the last character on every line is a space. Now let's take our attack string and step through this. So we are going to invoke Prince on our new newly created word list. So it's going to take a word list with a space at the end of every line and Prince is only going to select 
four elements from this. So we're not going to have prints joining two or five or six. It's going to have a minimum and a maximum of four. This is the this is a way we can ensure we're going to get a four element passphrase from this. We're also, because of our very uh, explicit criteria here, going to set a minimum length of 24 and a maximum length of 26. You would, of course, never do that uh, in the field <laughs> if you're trying to crack hashes. Uh, most times, unless I've got reason to believe otherwise, I'll just set a minimum password length of 8 and let Prince uh, devise the rest. Um, but yes, we're going to tailor this to make sure it cracks within a, you know, a reasonable time for this training class. We're then going to pipe the output from that into Hashcat. Business as usual here now, mode 1000 NTLM, here's our hash, but as the slide recently alluded to, we are going to want to delete the last character from each element, the last character being our trailing space from our um, dictionary. And we're going to run optimised kernels because, you know, why not? We want to do this as, as quickly as possible. So that is now going to run. And luckily for us, it's cracked very quickly. And here we have it. Acute there about contact, where the last trailing space has been removed and it's a space delimited passphrase in itself. So that's a really nice way of building up these chains. Now, of course, you can use um, prints both with or without, you know, looking to attack passphrases very nicely in targeted word lists that you might have scraped from organizational sites or other information that you have. Um, RockQ is quite a nice one to run it, uh, run it across as well. You can of course choose, but if your dictionary is too small, you, of course you're going to, you know, you're going to run out of candidates very, very quickly. Okay then. So there was our attack on print passphrases using space delimited um, attacks. You don't obviously have to use space delimited attacks, but we've done it in this instance just to show you that you can attack these more complex and more advanced passwords. Um, but great, that's great. Thanks very much for joining us and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.